Hey everybody, Masaki here, and welcome back to another video of another video of Shining Force. We're starting at the start screen right here for the moment because I'm going to show you how to skip past all of Simone's talking at the start to get right into the game. What you're going to do here is when you hit start, okay, let's get past all this again. You're going to hold down start, and she'll automatically be right at the very end of it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually cut the video here for a second and then I'll meet you right back at the fight where we were before. Okay, and here we are back at the first fight everyone. Off screen I leveled everyone up to two or tried to. There's still one or two characters that don't. Um, Hans died and I'm not bringing him back because it would bring us to him around to taking his turn regardless of whether we're wanting to use him or not. When we could just be taking that time to progress further in the battle here and move things along a little quicker. So with that said, what happened here was we got Gong and we talked to... If you, if you remember, we got Gong and we went and we talked to um, Jogurt there in the other area. This goblin right here moved down from like right here next, moved down a couple spots from right next to the knight right there. This knight is our boss and he's gonna move up about right here. This goblin and this goblin are going to move down around here too. This one's gonna move down here and this one right here will move like about here along with this wall. And these two dwarfs are going to guard the boss or the rune knight here. So, they're starting us off on Tau. So I'm going to move Tau up right here. We'll move Gong up about there. But keep him a little off to the side so that he doesn't block any of the fighters' a movement from moving up to kill anyone. <laughs> okay, well... As you saw, I guess, you know. Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. The goblins can actually, here. Like this inner goblin here actually moved to down here and the two, and the goblin on the outside here moved over here, like I was talking about happening. So it all depends on the order of which the goblins move to which three will move down and which two move to block the rune knight. Alright, I'm going to Tau up here. She's already level 2, but I'm going to cast at least once with her right now. Attack the furthest back goblin. And she's off to the side, so she can't be attacked without some little bit of movement towards her. And of course, how these guys are, these three goblins down here, they're just going to essentially block your path. Alright, now our leader is already level 2, as is Ken. I think Luke... And I know Lau are the only two that aren't level 2 just yet. And that was because we didn't get too much use for healing with Lau last level. Or last level, what the heck am I saying? The last time I went through this. Or I went through this, I should say. Off screen. I figured I'd move Lau up and have him just physically attack to get a little bit of experience there. Kinda of, kind of needs it since he's the, actually the furthest behind in experience towards level 2. Alright, Goblin's going to attack Luke here. One damage. Not bad. These Goblins can hit you for like at least 2 or 3 damage. If you're like level 1 going through here, so... Alright, nice. Inflicted 8 points of damage on the Goblin, defeating it. 34 experience, 12 coins for our leader. Luke, move up. Gonna have you kill this guy, although Lau might be able to actually take him out there. Inflict 7 points of damage. Goblin defeated. Luke gained 3d experience, and we got 12 coins. And yeah, you could say I'm being a little bit risky, but everyone, remember, also has uh, medical herbs for healing if need be. Alright, so Lau did 3 points of damage and got 8 experience. Okay, I was expecting that. Let's hope he survives this. Good. 
three points. Dark Dwarf's gonna hit really hard, so just remember that in this first fight. His Dark Dwarfs are gonna be the things that do the most damage to you. Alright, Luke took one point of damage there. Gonna have Ken throw his spear here at this goblin that moved down. Inflict six points of damage. Oh, nice. There's your first glimpse of a double a hit. Ken did a total of... Did two hits for six damage for a total of 12 damage, killing the goblin. And got 12 experience. Now we're gonna cast Blaze to finish off this guy. Although, again, Lau could finish it off, but... He'll get plenty of opportunities for casting heal to get experience in this fight. Alright, Tao got 30 experience and 12 coins for killing that goblin. She did about 7 points of damage, that's usually what Blaze 1 does. Okay, there's what it looks like when you or an enemy miss. You attack, but there's no sound effect and no animation. And it just says the hit was evaded. Oh, come on, don't do too much damage to him. Oof, 3 points. Might not seem like much, but we're still only level 1, level 2, so that's quite a bit at this point still. Alright, Luke suffers one point of damage. As soon as Lau gets his turn, I'm actually going to move him away. And um, have him heal himself. Alright, let's move our leader and have him attack, because we've not done anything with him just yet. Alright, hero attacks, 8 points of damage. Ooh, nice, and another double attack for you guys. Another 7 points of damage on a second attack, defeating the goblin. He got 48 experience and 12 coins. So in case you guys have been wondering, I've um, been getting back into trying to finish Rogue Legacy. I'm at the very end. I've gotten to the point where I can get to um, the point where the boss turns into the fountain occasionally. I'm still having a bit of trouble getting down his fighting patterns enough to do enough to get to it every time. But, you know, I'm not struggling too heavily with that. And I'm going to heal our leader first just because he's... It's because, like I said, if he dies, you'll lose the fight and, like, half of your gold. And where I moved Lyle behind him to heal him, it is not as easy for them to get to Lyle at this point. Alright, attack with you again. Six points of damage, 16 experience. Alright. Just in case I'll move you down there, though. The knight is going to stay up there until you get within a reasonably close distance of him, so don't worry too much about him moving down on us right now. Just keep everyone down here towards the middle of the field to take out the goblins and the dwarves here so you don't have to worry about um, the rune knight coming down on you while you're doing this. Alright, Luke inflicted 4 points of damage, gained 10 experience. Alright, uh, what are you going to do? Oof, 6 points of damage, that's pretty hefty. I'm going to have Lau heal himself this turn. Now don't worry, because I do have a medical herb on just about everyone, and then Gong can heal him if I feel he's going to be in risk of getting um, hit and killed here in the next couple of rounds. Alright, so now we're going to move our leader over here to pull him out of harm's way and have Lau heal him now. And this is Lau's last heal. Hopefully he'll hit level 2 here. If not, he does have a medical herb I can use to heal. Ah, oh, darn it. Alright, good. He didn't move around to a tech leader at all. Alright, Luke took quite a bit of damage there. Alright, Ken, I'm going to throw your spear some more. Oh yeah, so basically, if you saw how I was moving everyone, that's what I was referring to by, um... That's what I was referring to when it came to setting up your party in a, in a fashion to move forward without risking too much. You put like your casters and your healers towards the back in relation to where the enemy is. And you put your, well, you, you put your casters kind of towards the back. Okay, let me rephrase that. Sorry about this um, mix up here. 
healers you want to put kind of towards the back of, in relation to where the enemy is according to where you are. Healers towards the... Okay, you want to put... Okay, so say where this guy is right here. This is how I kind of have it for approaching the knight up there. You want all of your fighters and meleeers in the front here. Because your leader is going to be the thing they target the most. You want him in the middle. Because AI will always go for him first. And you want your casters you can put in the middle and your healers towards the back or the middle in relation to where the enemy is and how you're moving towards him. Alright, now let's heal Luke. In the next fight, I'll, word, I'll go over it again, because I know I messed up a lot there trying to phrase that. Alright, I'm not going to have you guys attack, because... Ah, oh, crap. I <laughs> casted heal on the wrong person. Because they already got quite a bit of experience towards level 3, and Ken did hit level 3. Alright, so... Aside from playing Destiny here and there, um, played a little bit of Guided Fate Paradox. Not getting too heavily back into that just yet, because that's all post-game for me in that. Continued on Symphonia, I actually got the Sword Dancer taken care of in that and got the Kusanagi Blade, as well as I've defeated and gained Maxwell as a summon. All I really have left to do now that I haven't done yet is go and defeat Nebulum to get the um, the Devil Arms completely unlocked. Alright, so our leader leveled up to level 3 there. Defense 2, attack went up by 1, and then see the other things. But you can rewind the video and pause it and slow it down if you want to check out what the, what the other stat raises were. Uh, speed increased by 1. Alright, so now I'm going to move everyone up, but kind of off to the side, because now we're to the point where we're going to be fighting the Rune Knight here, and he hits a lot harder than anyone else does. Oh yeah, go ahead, take out Gong. He kind of can't use any heals anymore, and I don't have a medical herb on him at the moment. And I'm just going to kind of throw everyone at him. Figuratively speaking to do damage, I'm not going to throw anyone directly in harm's way. That fast. To kill him. Alright, come on, Tao. Nice, one point. If Lao can get a turn, I'm going to try to kill him with Lao. Alright, come on, Lao, don't let me down. You're the only one level, two, level one still. Alright. Did like two or three points of damage, gained 45 experience, hit level two, hit points increased by one, magic increased by two. Nice. Fools, you have one here, but Lower Cannon of Runefoss is even now attacking Guardiana. If that creature spoke truly, we must return to help defend Guardiana. Alright, so now we're just left to, you know, head out and head back home right from there. So let's head out, and we'll see what's going on. The earthquake blocked the road. Head north, but be ready for battle. No one enters Guardiana. We live for Dark Soul. Death to Guardiana. Death to Guardiana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now we don't have a boss, but... As you can see, we have two Rune Knights and a third Dark Dwarf to deal with. This will be the last time you see goblins. But remember, the Rude Knights and the Dark Dwarfs still hit really hard. Okay, now as you can see, there's a narrow pathway coming up from where you exit into this fight here. And these hills here will also reduce your movement by 30%. So you're not going to be able to move everyone up and out of this area here too easily. Because what will happen is when you move, start moving people up through here to get towards the opening here that you can cross over. They'll be blocked by other people that you've already moved there because you can't move their full movement range. I'm sorry if that was confusing, but that's basically how this is going to kind of slow you down here. So 
pick and choose, you know, kind of move your fighters up first. And then move like your casters and healers up behind them. That way in case something does decide to attack you, they won't be able to kill you. As you can see, I didn't move my leader up as far as I could or Tau. I kind of moved them off to the side to make room for everyone else. Oop, no, 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 no. Okay. Now, as you can see, what will happen is these three goblins, they're going to move up here at the opening to block your passage. And so will these three goblins here. Now, I might be wondering why when this one is so far away, but trust me. The six goblins will get in their formation to block you before you even get up there. So don't worry about that. And then these two dwarfs, they're just going to kind of hang around where this one is until you get to them. Now, as you can see, this is an example here. It's Ken's turn, but because of his movement blocking, I can't move him anywhere is really further up because everyone's in the possible spaces he could move to. And it was kind of the same for Lau. He only had a very, very small amount of movement that he could do. Alright, so these three goblins are going to continue to just ignore us and move up to block the mountain pass. Let's move Ken up again. Tau, as you saw there, she can't move because of the very small area that we have to move through on this narrow passage with the hills. Alright, Lau, we'll move you up the couple spots you can go for the moment. Alright, here we go. Now I can move you a little bit further out and we can actually get some more guys up and out out of this little narrow choke way here. A little easier. Alright, yeah, sorry if my commentary is kind of lagging a bit. I kind of have to record this bit of the video because I accidentally deleted it before I posted it. Although it was all safe together, but it still needed the video for me to actually pull it up and up and um, turn it into an MP4, which I totally forgot about. I'm just going to move Luke up here and attack this one goblin. 5 damage, 10 experience. As you can see, those are the three goblins that are already up here by the mountain pass that we have to cross over. Like I said, you know, you're not going to really be too concerned about that because there's no way you're going to get everyone up there before those six goblins start blocking your pass like they are right now. All right, let's move our leader up a little further. Move Ken up one spot. When you're moving down this narrow one space passage and the 30% hill remove hill reduction here, or well, 30% movement reduction from the hills. Even one spot can mean a lot in moving up another member that's further back. Right, we're approaching 20 minutes here, so I'm just going to kind of move everyone up, and then I'm going to end off the video here shortly, and in the next one we shall continue this fight. Alright, come on. Let me get another turn here. Yeah, sorry if I'm getting really quiet. I'm just kind of waiting for them to give me more turns here so I can move everyone out further. That's basically what will happen. These three goblins, they're going to sit here like this in a corner formation. And then those three goblins and two dwarfs are just going to sit there. Once I get two or three people up to about a, to the point where they can attack these goblins... These three goblins and these three goblins are going to form a sort of S right here. But those dwarfs are going to stay where they are. Alright, let's see. Move you up a spot. Move you. Move you. I got a couple more minutes before I should, before we actually hit 20, so let's see what happens here. Move you up and attack this goblin now, Luke. Alright, let's see. Five points of damage. Gain another 10 experience. Not bad. All right, Lau. Now, I did have a medical herb on Hans, but I haven't transferred it yet. It's kind of my own fault because I'm having to re-record this, but... You know, I should be able to make it through this fight. They kind of hold your hand a little bit in these first couple of fights here. So it's not going to be anything too drastically hard, minus one, like, medical herb for healing. Yep, see, here we go. I had someone moved up to fight, and one of the goblins start... I had one of my 
Luke moved up really further to attack the bat goblin in the back there, those three. And one of them already started moving towards the middle there. And once one of them does, all six of them are going to, as you can see. Alright, so I'm going to be ending this off here in a minute. And you get to see the formation, and this is basically what happens. You saw how there were three goblins over right here, and then the other three right there. Once you get about to here, they form a little 2x3 block right here at the mountain pass that you have to kill them at before you can move on. And these dwarfs just kind of sit there picking their nails and sitting back while you do that. Alright, so we're hitting 20 minutes here now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry if the commentary was lacking or confusing at all in this um, video. But I had to re-record it and had some difficulties keeping my thoughts and sentences together decently because of how late it is. But I will see you all in the next one where we finish this fight and then actually go on to see what happened in Guardiana. So until then, everybody, goodbye and I'll see you all later. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe.